I'm so glad Jesus set me free. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus set me free. Are you free? Are you really free? You know that secret of yours? The one that nobody knows about? Then you're not free. If you're living your life with a secret that nobody knows about, then you're in prison. And you may not admit it to yourself. Maybe you don't even know it. Maybe this is going to ring true in your spirit. And you're going to finally get it that you have allowed yourself to be put in prison. And it doesn't matter if it's truth or lies. The bars feel the same. But the truth about the situation is going to set you free. You got to know that. And I'm here to give you this really good news today that you can't go back and you can't undo and you can't redo and you can't change what's behind you. But Paul the apostle said that you could forget what's behind you and press forward towards the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And do you know what that high calling includes? It includes you walking in the truth. And I don't care if nobody likes it. When you walk in the truth, when you allow the, the cover to be pulled off this thing, and when you lay the whole big pile of ugly right on the table, I want to promise you something. There's going to be somebody in your world that's going to love you anyway. It might be the very test that you need to find out who says they love you and who really, really loves you. Because I want to tell you something. Love doesn't throw anybody away just because they find out the secret. Now, I'm not saying buy a billboard and put it out on the highway. I, you've got to be, you know, if you lay your pearls before swine, sometimes you might get torn by their teeth. But I am saying that some of you have spent years and years and years and years living in a prison because you've never ever told anybody what you did or what they did to you or who you are. Are you waking up every day of your life pretending that you're somebody you're not? Are you really going to live that life? Did you know that everything hidden shall be revealed? <laughs> I used to read that verse and I used to think, oh, Jesus, precious Jesus. I hope not. I used to think, dear God, if I can just get through this life and nobody know about me, you mean they're going to find out in heaven? When I saw that verse, I was towed up. I thought, hell, to the no. They're going to all find out anyway. And do you know what? That's the truth. When it's all said and done, nothing hidden is going gonna, is gonna to stay hidden. It's going to all be revealed. We're going to all know. And you know what the real truth is? Most of us know anyway. We really do. And guess what? We've made a decision to love you anyway. It doesn't matter. It happened. It is what it is. You are who you are. You've been where you've been. And my decision to be in your life and to love you is not based on your pathway of perfection that is behind you as far as natural things are concerned. I can look right past anything going on in your past or present and see the perfection that's inside of you. Blessed are the pure in heart. They'll see God. When I look at you, I'm going to see God. And I want, to, I want to guarantee you one thing. When you lay your truth on the table, you're going to lose some folks. Oh, they're going to turn their back and walk away. Folks that you thought would love you forever. Folks that said, I, I, I just, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Did you know that when folks start telling you that mess, that you may as well wave by to them? For the most part. 
As a pastor, I've watched it through the years. When somebody starts hugging my neck at the door telling me how wonderful I am and how I changed their life and how, oh, Brother Robert, it's, you're just so wonderful to me. I don't know if they're trying to convince me or trying to convince themselves or trying to make up for the fact that they're fixing to screw me sideways or what it is. Or say bye without even saying bye, just leave. It's been such a mystery to me to watch that pattern through the years. So folks that, that are all about the right words don't always stick it out. Now, sometimes they do. But I want to promise you this. There are some folks in your life that Father has strategically placed there, and they're going to be there no matter what when your secret comes out. Some of them is going to scatter like roach bugs when the light turn on. But you know what? There's some folks that are going to run to you like a moth runs to the light that turns on. That's the way it's meant to be. Perfect love casts out fear. He's given us perfect love. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to talk about where you've been and what you've walked through. We know it anyway. Or who you are. Who you are is okay with God. He loves you. And he gets you. And nothing's ever going to separate you from him. Do you know that Paul said that neither death or life or principalities or powers or things present or things to come, nothing in heaven, nothing in hell, nothing in the earth could ever separate you from the love of God. Ever. Nothing. Nothing. And that love of God is not just some invisible force pouring out of the stratocumulus. That love of God exists on the inside of you and on the inside of folks all around you. That love is there. And it might not come in the channel of Christianity. I mean, just to tell you the truth, the worst I've ever been treated in my life was by Christians. Now, bless their hearts. I got to forgive them and, and, you know, move on. But you would expect that the folks in your life that would be the most loving and forgiving would, would be the ones of, Oh, Jesus saved the ones that realized he saved them. But there's some folks that he saved that don't even realize it yet. And you might just experience more love from them than from anybody else. I tell you where you're going to find a lot of love. And it's God's love because all love is God's love. You're going to find a lot of love and a lot of compassion from folks that have been through it. From folks that have gone through what you're going through. That's why it's good to find your tribe. Sometimes to find those that have been hurt with the same hurts you've been hurt with, it helps you because they can give you advice and they can truly have compassion and understand what you're going through. And I think that's one of the coolest things about Jesus. Paul the Apostle says that he's our high priest and that we've been given a high priest that's easily touched with the feelings of our infirmities because he felt everything that we have felt, every temptation, every weakness, yet without sin. Whatever you're feeling today, he felt it. Whatever you've been through, he understands what that can do to you because he had the same type thing happen inside of him when he became you. That's part of the substitutionary sacrifice. It's He knows everything you've gone through and he's already experienced it in such a way that he's able to strengthen you so that you can walk through it. And there's a strengthening factor that I want to remind you of tonight. He's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. And, and for one, I'm, going to con I'm just going to commit to you to walk in that same kind of unconditional love. And whatever it is, I'm going to still love you. So like the old fellow said in the church I used to go to, <laughs> we had testimony time on Sunday night and folks would get up and they'd, confess their sins or they'd tell what Jesus had done for them, the stuff that he wouldn't do for the guy next door. Kind of bragging, spiritual bragging, we called it. But folks would also confess their sins because our Pentecostal church was real big on, you know, confess your sins one to another. This old brother stood up one night and he said, I'd like to confess my sins, preacher. The preacher said, tell it all, brother. He said, I, I've been real bad. He said, tell it all, brother. He said, last Friday night I got drunk. He said, tell it all, brother. He said, I went driving. I was drunk driving. He said, tell it all, brother. He said, I picked up a young girl outside of a town and me and her went to the motel and we did crazy stuff all night long. He said, I don't believe I told that, brother. 
<laughs> Some folks just seeing you not tell it, but I'm telling you this. Sometimes you need to tell it because it's the truth that's going to set you free. It's the truth that's going to make you free. And it's the very thing that's going to show you who's willing to walk in your truth and love you anyway. So I hope that little word helps you tonight. And I hope I don't have a message box full of bad confessions about stuff y'all did. Because I just don't know if I can take it. <laughs> well, I can take it. And I'll love you anyway. And if I don't message you right back, it might not mean that, uh, that something's wrong. I might just be in intercession for you. Or I might be making me a BLT. You, know, you never know. But my, my commitment to you is to love you anyway. And my encouragement to you is to walk in truth. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, well, then we'll have true fellowship one with another. That's what John said. I'm going to walk in the light with you. You walk in the light with me, and that's a place we can find true fellowship. All righty then. You be good and tell the truth. Mama's watching. <laughs>